Hi, my name is Claudia Rubis, and I'm the librarian who will be teaching the online workshop for Need Articles. I'm going to start on our LibGuide Library Workshop page, which you see here. What you'll notice uh, as soon as you get onto the page is our flyer for our in-person library workshops all of the dates um, and times that our workshops are listed. Now to get to the online workshops, you're going to go down to the bottom. And for this workshop, it is the Need Articles Use Online Databases link right here. When you click on that, it's going to take you to the LibGuide created specifically for this online workshop. At the top is information in case you decide to attend an in-person workshop. All of the dates and times are listed there for you. Now here at the bottom is the link to the recording which you're watching now and I'm going to go over briefly um, what is covered in this workshop and how you're going to receive your digital badge to show that you completed the requirements for this workshop. So what I'll be discussing with you in this workshop are the pros and cons of doing academic research in Google versus using our library databases. I'm also going to look at different source types and the difference between uh, popular and scholarly sources. I'll then jump into some of our library databases and do some sample searches for you and show you some of the tools and features of different databases. Now to receive your digital badge for this workshop, there are three things that you need to do. One is to complete the activity worksheet. I'm going to scroll down here and you'll notice it's this box here. There are three options for you of how to fill in the activity worksheet. You can open a Google Doc, make a copy, and then type in your work there. You can download the Word Doc, type in your work there. You can download the fillable PDF and type in your work there. Once you've completed your activity worksheet, you will need to save it with a file name that makes sense to you, and you will email me the completed activity worksheet. This goes along with the demonstration of the presentation that I have and the databases that I review. So it should be completed while you watch the rest of this video. The second thing you need to do is to complete the quiz. Um, it's the assessment and it is labeled here at the bottom as assessment for asynchronous attendees. So this is um, for those of you who are watching from home and doing this on your own time. This quiz uh, will be available only from Monday, November 7th to Friday, December 2nd. And just keep in mind that once you begin the quiz, you need to finish it. Um, otherwise, you will have exceeded the number of attempts that you are allowed to take the quiz. You do need to pass the quiz with a 70% or higher in order to receive credit for the workshop. The results are automatically emailed to me once you've completed the quiz. And lastly, you need to complete a participation survey. This is at the bottom. The link is here. It's just five questions about your experience with this workshop. If you have any questions at any time uh, about this process, uh, about the presentation, about the activity sheet, or receiving your digital badge, you can email me right here at crevis at riohondo.edu, and I'll be sure to answer your question as quickly as possible. Okay, we're going to move on to the presentation portion of the workshop. So make sure to have your activity worksheet ready and or any other uh, note taking applications or paper pencil that will help you. 
Okay, so this is Need Articles Use Online Databases Workshop. As I mentioned, my name is Claudia Rivas. I'm one of the full-time librarians here, and you can always contact me with any questions regarding this workshop at crivas at riohondo.edu. So the first thing we're going to discuss is databases versus website searches. So what are the benefits of doing a website search or a Google search? One is that Google is free. Anyone can use it. It's very easy to use. It's user friendly. It is really great for general information. So for example, uh, when was Mozart born? Um, how long has Bob's Burgers been on TV? Things like that. General general information. It can lead to some free academic research, specifically with Google Scholar. And if you are interested in Google Scholar, I recommend you attend uh, the other workshop on uh, my, uh, Google Apps. Now some bad things about Google searches or websites for research purposes is that there are no filters or citation tools which when I show you the database you'll see are a really huge benefit to using the databases. There is no quality control uh, on these websites. It's open publishing and editing which means anyone can publish a website there is no internet police out there monitoring to make sure that this website on Porsches or the common cold is accurate information. There's also a lot of advertising, uh, especially with Google results. A lot of sites are sorted based on sites who have paid to be the first ones to appear in the list of results. So you might not be getting the most relevant sites, but rather those who have paid to be noticed first. There's also a lot of misinformation or what's otherwise known as fake news. So someone who purposely publishes wrong information, sometimes it's accidental. Uh, people think that they're providing the correct information, but in fact they are not. So because of all of this, you actually have to do more work to determine whether a website is credible and whether the information on the website is reliable. Now let's look at the pros and cons of databases. Databases offer a wide variety of source types, not just websites and not just articles on a website. They provide academic research, which is written by professionals. They do provide filtering features and citation tools. And they do allow for more in-depth research. The most important thing about our databases is that they offer credible and reliable information. So you don't have to do that extra work of trying to figure out if the source is a good source or if the content is good content to use for your research assignment. Some cons about databases. Databases are subscription based, which means the access to them is limited to your library or institution. Many public libraries also have database subscriptions. Full text is not always available. Sometimes they only give you article titles, and so you do need to use the filters to make sure that a full text is being provided. And to use the database requires a set of research skills and strategies to find what you're looking for. And this is where librarians come in to help, and a little bit of what we're gonna be covering today are some strategies and tips on how to use the databases to obtain articles that you need for research purposes. Now let me go over some source types. 
So number one is websites. That's what we mentioned at first with Google searching. Magazine articles are another source type. Newspaper articles. Trade journal articles. Academic or scholarly journal articles. These are also known as peer-reviewed articles. Videos, images, and so much more. Many more than I can list here, but you will see some examples in the databases. Tweets, Facebook posts, uh, blogs, dissertations, conference papers, those are all different types of sources. Now what's the big difference between popular and scholarly sources? Popular sources tend to be magazines, newspapers, trade journals, and websites. These sources provide general information. Many times they're meant for entertainment purposes to the public. They are usually written in a more casual, non-technical language. They tend to have glossy, colorful images and there typically are advertisements included in these publications. Scholarly sources or academic sources on the other hand, as I mentioned, also known as peer-reviewed journals, academic journals, scholarly journals. There are also books that can be considered scholarly, so very much like a magazine is a popular source. You have certain books that can be more of a popular book. Um, so this would be your fiction or your children's books, your young adult books, um, books for fun, for pleasure. And then you have academic books, um, which are written by academic experts in the field and provide uh, research with data to support it. So this is, in, this is the case for both the academic journals as well as for books. Scholarly sources tend to facilitate scholarly communication, so it's not just for entertainment purposes, but rather to educate or inform the public. There tends to not be any color in these publications. They tend to be black and white. They tend not to have images. If they do, they're usually graphs or charts to demonstrate data um, to explain the results of their findings. Now you always wanna double check with your professor about what types of sources they allow or prefer for their assignment. The more advanced courses are going to require scholarly sources only but some courses will allow popular sources as well. So always double check with your professor to see what types of sources and how many sources are needed for the assignment. Now, these are some of our more popular databases here at Rio Hondo, but also um, many of these you will see throughout your academic uh, college career. EBSCO is a big name in research. EBSCO is a humanities focused database. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't cover other topics because it does, but its emphasis tends to be focused on the humanities. It covers a variety of disciplines. It offers a variety of source types. And ProQuest, which is another big name company for research purposes, you will also most likely see as you continue in your academic career, um, is a social science focused database. But it also offers uh, articles on other topics as well. It covers a variety of topics and also offers a variety of source types. Now another popular database of ours is Opposing Viewpoints. This is provided by Gale. Gale is another uh, largely known database company and each of their databases provides a particular emphasis. 
this database in particular offers hot topic social issues and it also provides viewpoint articles so articles that have some kind of opinion attached to them and it does offer a variety of source types as well. SIRS is a product of ProQuest so ProQuest owns SIRS. What's really great about SIRS is that it is a pro-con database. It actually provides you uh, an essential question and provides a pro viewpoint and a con viewpoint. And it also gives you three articles for each stance. It tends to focus on hot topic social and global issues and it also offers a variety of source types. Lastly is Films on Demand. I probably won't get to cover this today, but I do want you to be aware of it. It is one of our streaming platforms. We currently offer this along with a couple of others. Films on Demand offers digital videos. As I said, it's a streaming platform, streaming service. It offers educational title, titles in a variety of subject areas. Okay, so now we're going to head on to the databases. I want you to continue to follow along and take notes on your activity worksheet. And then you'll be completing the assessment at the end of the demonstration. Okay, now to get to the databases, there are several ways. I have on the workshop libguide, uh, this page that you're looking at here, I have several links to the popular databases which I mentioned in the presentation. So these are links directly to EBSCOhost, ProQuest, Opposing Viewpoints, SIRS, and Films on Demand. But we have many more databases apart from these. Now to access our full list of databases, you would start on the college's home page and click on the library link, the very last circle here, and it'll take you to our library website. Now from the library website on the left hand side of the menu options, you want to select articles and databases. When you click on that, it will take you to our full list of databases which are listed in alphabetical order. Now you can scroll down to the database that you're looking for. You also see on the right hand side popular databases are listed and any new or trial databases that we might have. You can also click on a letter. If you know you're looking for EBSCO you can click on E for EBSCO and select your database from there. The third option is to go into your Access Rio page. So if you click on Access Rio, it's going to ask you to log in. And your page might look a little different from mine, but everybody has a library tab uh, or menu option on the left hand side of Access Rio. So once you're logged in, you'll see on the left hand side there will be a library option. When you click on that, it will give you the full list of databases that we offer. Now the advantage to going through Access Rio is that if you are away from home, when you click on any database link, a pop-up box will appear asking you to log in to your Access Rio in order to get access into the databases. So you, no matter what, you'll have to type in your Access Rio username and password in order to get access to the databases. But any of these options will work for you to access the databases. I'm going to go back to this page here and I'm going to select EBSCOhost. This will be the first database that I review with you. So here I am in EBSCOhost. Now, when you click on EBSCOhost, you might think that you're only searching through one database. 
but actually you're searching through several databases that are part of EBSCO. Now if you see up here at the top where it says searching, it says academic search complete. If you click on show all, it will give you the full list of databases which you are currently searching when you are searching through EBSCO host. Now some of these databases we have individually listed in our A to Z database list so that you can search through a single EBSCO database rather than all of them. If you want to modify this list of databases that you're searching through, you can click here where it says choose databases. This pop-up box will appear. It'll show you all of the databases that you're currently searching through. And to find out a little bit more about each one, you would click on this little arrow or caret, and it's going to give you a brief explanation of what is inside that database. So Sonal Complete is a database that covers um, nursing and health topics. And we actually have Sanal listed individually on the A to Z database list for our nursing students. So you can see each one, um, the description, and if they cover topics that are of interest to you for your research topic. Or you can leave them all checked off and simply use the filters um, to help narrow down your results. It's up to you. The less databases that you select, the more specific or less results you will have. So keep that in mind. Um, now each of these has their own name and their own emphasis, but they are all, all a part of EBSCO. So the way I like to describe it is EBSCO is the parent and these are the, the children or the baby databases. They're all connected by EBSCO, so keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and leave them all checked off, click OK, because I do want to show you how to narrow down with keywords and also with filters. Now what you want to keep in mind with EBSCO is that this is a keyword driven database. So you have to type in keywords into the boxes to generate a list of results. Spelling matters and typing matters, so you want to be careful with what you're typing and that you're spelling your keywords correctly. It's also important that you don't get stuck on one word or one phrase. You want to mix it up. Um, think of related terms or synonyms and the database can also help you with thinking of other terms to conduct your search. So I'm going to do a sample search for you really quick and I'm going to be doing a search on the cost of college um, and is it worth it for education purposes. So I'm going to start with something simple and just put college costs. Okay. Now when I start typing in that phrase you'll notice that EBSCO gives me a drop-down list of results. Now you can select any one of these if you want. Typically it's uh, provided to you because someone else has done that search. Sometimes you'll find you'll get no results and sometimes you'll find you're not getting what you wanted. Um, so I tend to say stick with what you think you want to look for first and then you can use these as inspiration to come back and do another search later. Um, so I'm going to stick with my college costs right now and click search or hit enter either way. Okay, so what you'll see is that I have 45,000 results roughly with my search term of college costs. Now what EBSCO does is it bolds the words that I typed in the search box 
to show me that this is why it gave me this article in my results list. So the first article shows it in the title. That's not shown in the second result, probably because those keywords are somewhere in the article itself, or it might be in the paragraph about the article. Um, so it's not in the title though. Now if I keep scrolling down, you'll see here again it's showing up in my title. And then if I notice here in this particular uh, source, this is an academic journal, under subjects it actually has college students and college costs listed as a subject keyword. Okay. So that might be useful for me to know for uh, an, a next search, a follow-up search. Now you'll notice in these results here, it is only bolding the word college or the word university by itself. So this is one problem with the database, is that it's looking at the word college by itself and it's looking at the word cost by itself. Not always, um, but m most or some of the time. And let's say that in this scenario, I really want the database to give me results with this combined phrase. So the two words together. So what I can do to help the database know that I only want results with this combination phrase is to put quotation marks both at the beginning and at the end of the phrase. That helps the database know that I'm looking for these two words together, not by themselves. And I'll click search again to update my results and see what I get. Now you'll notice with this update, I now have 13,000 results, which is a lot less than the 40 something thousand that I initially had. And you'll notice here in my subjects, college costs is appearing. And I'm seeing more in the title, college and costs. Okay. And you can also, of course, look at the titles of the articles to see if the relevancy of them is improved with that search. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the database is doing a much better job of giving me the college costs phrase in my results. Now I would at this point go through my results and see if any of these articles are useful to me. Now the title of course will tell you a lot. The subjects also give you a hint about what the contents of the article are. If it's a academic journal article like this first one, when you hover over the magnifying glass, it will also give you an abstract, and the abstract is a summary of the article. It gives you a brief overview of the contents, which is great because uh, academic journal articles tend to be a lot longer than other source types. And so this gives you an opportunity to see if this is an article that you really want to read and if it's useful to you for your research purposes. Now if you've gotten everything that you can with this search, um, this is when I would say now it's time to try another search, an alternate search, and modify your search terms. So that's what we're going to do next. So remember that I pointed out here the subjects listed and you have college costs as a key subject. So something you can do is actually search through results based on the subject field. So here where it says college costs, I'll leave that the way it is, but instead where it says select a field, I will scroll down and select subject terms. That really helps to narrow down results. I'm going to click on search because it's only looking through the subject field and it's looking for that specific phrase of college costs. And it 
gave me half of the results that I originally had, 7, to 7, uh, from 14,000 to 7,000 results. So you'll see here that in my subjects, all I'm getting are college costs. So that's a really useful tip on how to reduce or focus in your results, okay? Now, I'm gonna go back to my general search and I can add, I can also add additional phrases. So let's say I wanted to find out about college costs specifically to, obviously this is college so we want um, higher ed, right? So let's say I want college costs and higher education and maybe I want that specific phrase as well because I don't want higher by itself or education by itself. So I want that phrase. Now I'm putting it in the second box and you'll notice that there's this little drop down menu next to it. These are called Boolean operators. Now what Boolean operators are are basically commands uh, the way I like to explain it is almost like a calculator function. It's um, telling the database how to put these words or phrases together in order to give you the best results. So when you are selecting AND, you're obviously telling the database, I want both of these phrases to appear together. So this would be like the plus sign in a calculator. So please add these together. If you say OR, you're basically telling the database that these terms are equal. They're synonyms to each other, and so you're okay with results that have either college costs or results with the phrase higher education, that you're okay with one or the other. If you say NOT, then you're telling the database I don't want to see any results with the words higher education. I only want to see results with the words college costs, okay? Now keep in mind, even with the quotation marks, the database is not always 100% accurate in its results, but it does try its best to give you what it is you're telling it to look for. So I'm gonna leave the and and see what I get with my two phrases. So I have 6,000 results and I did not select a particular field so this is just searching through all fields, um, areas of the article. It could be in the title, it could be in the summary, it could be in the content itself of the article. So I'm getting 6,000 results that mention college costs and higher education. And you'll notice that there is, is a subject appearing as higher education as well. So that could be another search that I do after I've looked through these results. And I can get some other ideas like higher education costs. Now you might think, well, that's basically what I'm saying here. But the database doesn't know that. The combination of words of higher education costs you haven't searched that yet. So the database, is, the database sees that as a whole new phrase, a whole new set of words. So even though to you it's the same, it means the same as what you've already searched to the database because it's a new combination of words, it'll be a new search with different results. So that's what I mean by don't get stuck on one word or one phrase you want to try a combination of words and phrases. Think of synonyms or related terms to do your research, okay? Especially if you have a really tough topic and you get stuck and you're not getting the results that you're looking for. So 6,000 is actually a pretty good number for me to work with, so I'm going to start using my filters from here, okay? Now on the left hand side is where you're going to notice first at the top this is your current search. So these are the keywords I've used and I currently am looking for related words, equivalent subjects, and I have full text. Full text is 
going to be automatically checked off for you in our databases because we want you to have a full article when you're doing your search. But it's always good to double check and make sure that this full text box is checked off. Basically, this ensures that you're getting an article and not just an article title, which can happen with a database. Now, we have a few options here. Um, date of publication, right now it says it's searching from 1929 to 2022. Depending on your topic and depending on the requirements of your instructor, you may want to update this to something a lot more recent. Uh, so for example, nursing students have to do research from the past two years. Um, some sociology classes require from the last six years. So you really want to think about your topic. Uh, how recent do you want the results? And also your professor's requirements. Now you also have here source types. If I click on show more, you'll see these are all the different available source types. Now remember we talked about a couple of these, but there are many more uh, that I didn't mention. You want to stick with the ones that you know your professor will accept for the assignment or the ones that are required for the assignment. So you always want to double check what sources you can or should use. Because we discussed some of the more popular sources, I'm going to stick with those. So I'm going to select news, magazines, academic journals, and trade publications. Okay. I do want to mention that you never want to use reviews. Reviews are like the review of a movie. You don't get to actually watch the movie, you just hear about it. Reviews will just tell you about a book but not give you the actual content. So there isn't any content you can actually use for your research papers or for the purpose of research. So don't do don't use reviews. So I'm going to click on update and that'll clear out quite a few of my results. So I'm down to almost 4000 results. And if I really want to make sure I also have peer-reviewed articles, I can select that by clicking off this box as well. But I won't do that here. I want to point out a few other uh, filters. Subject is a great filter. You already saw me do an initial search with the subject field. But I can also continue to narrow down here with subject terms. By looking at this list, this is how many articles have this associated subject. And if it looks good to me, I can check it off. And basically it'll get rid of everything else, but it'll only focus on these articles with these subjects. I'm going to leave this alone for now, but that's a great uh, filter to use to help you narrow down your results. Another really great a filter to use is the language filter because these databases publish articles from all over the world you will get articles published in different languages and so you do want to make sure that English uh, is checked off to get articles that you can read and use for your research and then the last filter that's really useful is geography geography is the same as location, which is how it will appear in ProQuest. Um, this is where in the world is this research happening. And again, uh, this depends on your topic and it depends on the requirements of your professor or instructor. If they only want research from the United States, then this is where you would check off United States. But keep in mind that you may notice some individual states are listed and so if you are doing research of the United States you would want to check off each individual state to include it in your results. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave them as, as it is and I'm going to stick with my 
almost 4,000 results and now we'll look at how to save these articles and other tools and features of the database. Okay, so as you look through the results here, you'll notice um, underneath the title on the left there's a little image icon and it'll tell you what source type this is. So this is a periodical, which is typically a magazine, newspaper article, uh, if it's an academic journal article. Now remember, I restricted my sources, so those are the most common results I'm going to see here. Now you can click on the title of the article to see it and to see the tools. But I do want to point out that there are a few ways that you can view the article. There is HTML full text and there is PDF full text. Now it depends on the article. Sometimes you will only get offered one or the other, as you see here. Sometimes the article will offer both options. Both options will give you the full article. The only difference is how it looks in the database. When I click on HTML full text, for example, it will show the article embedded in the database. And so you would scroll all the way down to see the full article. And as it slowly populates, you'll see it can scroll for a long time because this is a very long article. Now with the PDF option, I'm going to click on that. The PDF option shows the article as it was originally published. So you will see the original formatting if there were any images included or charts. Um, you will also see those as they were originally published as in PDF. So here's the article. You'll see it's 18 pages long. It's a pretty long article. And then from here you have your tools on the right hand side. Now even if you did HTML, you would still have the same tools on the right hand side that you can use. With the PDF viewer, you have a download and print option. And if you do want to download the article or print it, I do recommend using the PDF viewer tools for those features. If you're using HTML, then you would have to use the tools for database on the right hand side. Now you have a few ways you can save this article apart from downloading it. You can also link to your Google Drive or your OneDrive account and save the articles there. Um, but the way that I recommend is to email the article to yourself. So that's this little envelope on the right hand side. Now when you click on that little envelope you'll see this prompt. You can type in any email address you want. It does not have to be a real Hondo email. And with this option uh, over here, I want you to notice you have three radio buttons that you can pick from. You should select citation format and then scroll. And you can select the citation format that you need for your class, for your assignment. And then you click send. And what that does is it sends the article, because I have it here selected that I want the article attached. It will send the article and it will include the citation for this article in the body of the email. So in your email will live both items, both the article and the citation. So you have it saved to your email as long as you need it, um, which is a huge advantage to this feature. If you decide not to do that and you want to download the article to your computer or you decide to print the article but you still need a citation for your works cited page, then over here on the right is a little sheet of paper. You would click on that and this generates the citation and you would scroll, select the citation style that you need copy and paste. Now a couple of things to note about these citation generators in the databases. They are great, 
they do 90% of the work for you. But don't just copy paste and walk away. When you paste, you still need to make sure that you're doing all of the necessary formatting on your work cited page. So if you're doing MLA style, that would be um, double spaced, one, uh, one inch margins, uh, hanging indent, 12 point font, Times New Roman, and you would make sure that the elements that need to be italicized are italicized, that you don't have any live links, all of that good stuff. So just keep that in mind that these citation generators do a majority of the work, but you still need to do a little extra after you've pasted your citation. And that's pretty much it for the tools. The, the important tools. Let me go back to my result list. And that's pretty much it for EBSCO. And now we're going to move on to ProQuest. Now ProQuest works very similarly to EBSCO. You'll notice that although you may think you're searching through only one database, just like in EBSCO, you're actually looking through several. Up here at the top where it says change databases, if you click on that, you'll get the same or similar option as you saw in EBSCO, where you have the full list of ProQuest databases that you're actually searching through. Each one will give you a little description of what it covers. Each one again has its own emphasis. So very much like EBSCO, ProQuest is the parent, and these are the children or baby databases within it. You can click and unclick whichever databases you want to search through, or you can leave the full list selected, as I'm going to do here, and conduct your search through all of them. Now, just like in EBSCO, you have search boxes where you can type in your keywords, and again, you have to type in. So this is based on your typing and your spelling, so make sure you're typing accurately. Now I'm going to do the same search as I did with EBSCO. I'm going to start with college costs, and I'm going to do it with the quotation marks. And you can click search, or you can hit enter. Either way will give you your results list. Okay, and as the list pops up, I want you to note that ProQuest is a social science focused database, which means its emphasis is on social issues, but it does of course cover a variety of topics. So don't just use it because it's only for social sciences, it does cover a variety of other things. Now you'll see with college costs, I have 53,000 results. And in ProQuest, these keywords are highlighted in blue, which is a little different from EBSCO where it's bolded. Here it's a highlight. And very similar to EBSCO, you'll see on the left-hand side are your source types to select from. So you'll notice again we have newspapers, wire feeds, trade journals, some other things we didn't know before, dissertations, government publications, working papers, speeches, presentations. Um, I would stay away from wire feeds. These are usually just short bits of information um, that were published for news purposes. Um, so I'm going to stick with my common resource types, source types. I'm going to do magazines, newspapers, trade journals, and scholarly journals, and I will apply and narrow down my list and get rid of all the rest of the source types. Just so we can get a, a more workable list of results. Now from here we have 30,000 results. We got rid of 20. Then you have your publication date, just like an EBSCO. What's nice about ProQuest is it does give you these presets in the last year, the last five years, the last 10 years, or 
if you click on custom date range, you can specify um, months and years that you're looking for. And then you would click apply. We have the same subject filter as you saw in EBSCO. When you click on more, you will get the full list of subjects that you can narrow down and search through. The number on the right is how many articles have that subject. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And then remember language is important um, because of articles being published from all over the world and so it is useful to eliminate those which are not in English. So I usually like to select English just to make sure I'm getting those results. And then um, some another filter which is interesting that ProQuest offers is a person. Um, so ProQuest has a list of people that might be related to this topic and for which um, you know you might be interested in getting articles related to that person so this is just a small list so you can see here um, that's different from EBSCO EBSCO does not have a person filter and then we have location now location is just like an EBSCO um, geography right uh, where in the world is this research done and again if you're doing United States you would want to make sure you're checking off individual states if they're listed individually okay now going back to the results list similar again to EBSCO you have full text and then you have PDF full text options depending on the article sometimes you'll only get one of these options um, and again the difference is just what they look like in the database so if you're doing regular full text you will see the article embedded in the database whereas the PDF will give you the article as it was published and uh, again it depends on the article and um, what options are provided for that article so this is the full text in the body of the database so you see here but you still have your tools for this article up here in the top right I'll show you the PDF what that looks like and then you still have your tools in the top right okay now again with the PDF if you decide you want to print or download the article I recommend doing that through the PDF viewer but if you have a full text article, then you can just use these tools in the top right corner. So with these tools, you can download, you can print, you can cite. This is just to get the citation by itself. Make sure you are selecting the citation style that you're looking for, where you can copy and paste. And again, remember that these citations are only 90% uh, accurate. You do still want to double check them, make sure there are no mistakes, nothing extra, or if things are missing that you might need to fill in. Um, the good thing about ProQuest is there's no background color here, so you don't have to worry about that when you copy and paste. Um, and I am still going to recommend the email function with ProQuest because you can again include the article but also here bibliography this is including the citation of the article in your email along with the article and you can of course send this to any email address it doesn't have to be a real hondo email your name your subject and that's it you send it off okay um, so I'm going to go back to my results and those are kind of the big important tools and features of ProQuest, uh, very similar to EBSCO. So I'm back at my database list here and I'm going to go into Opposing Viewpoints, which is a Gale product. 
Gale is the name of the database company that provides this database. And when you are searching through opposing viewpoints, you are searching through only this one database, which is opposing viewpoints. Um, so unlike EBSCOhost or ProQuest in my previous examples, where you're searching through several, this is actually just the one database. And the emphasis of this database is controversial or hot topic issues. And because it's called Opposing Viewpoints, it provides viewpoint articles. So articles that have an opinion attached to them. Now there is a search box here in the top left, mm -hmm. but that's actually not how I recommend using the database. Whether you know your topic or don't know your topic, um, or are trying to come up with a topic, there is a better way to search through this database. And I'll leave the search box for the very end of the demonstration. So the first thing I want to show you is down here. Um, these are some issues. These are This is where you would browse the issues, and they are separated by categories. So you'll see here this is business and econ, energy and environment, health and medicine, science and technology, etc. Now they only give you three topics for each of these major categories. To see the full list of topics within each category, you would click on the blue, I'm sorry, the bolded black lettering of the topic. So society and culture, you would click on that and it'll take you to the 345 topics or articles for this um, major topic, okay? Now, I'm gonna go back because I wanna show you the full list of issues that this database offers. And it's still loading here, okay? Now the full list is where you go here, where it says Browse Issues, this little light bulb. When you click on that, it will actually take you to the full list of topics that this database offers, and they are listed in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. So if you already know your topic, you can just search for it here in alphabetical order. And there is a benefit to that, which I will show you in a second. Um, so I just want you to see the full list here. Okay, now where it says topics right here, view all, you're looking through all of them. But you can always go back to those first uh, categories that I showed you on the home page. So if you want to select family issues or uh, science and technology, then you can always click there and it'll reduce the number of topics based on this major category. Now if you want only the new or updated topics, as you'll see here with the red, you can always select those. Now this is another major advantage to the databases. Databases are constantly being updated with new articles that are being published every day. So this could be newspaper articles, magazine articles, or academic journal articles that come out published every day, every week, every month. These databases get updated with those news articles. So that's a huge benefit to the databases is that you, you will always get current information. Now, I want to show you what happens when you select one of these major topics. Now, because I was doing college costs in my previous, previous searches, I'm going to look for something related to education. So I'm going to come down, um, let's see, there's nothing that says cost, college, here we go, college tuition and student loans. I'll do that one. Okay. Now because this is a major topic, you will see an overview. When you click on that link, you're going to see an overview of this topic. Very brief 
of which you can always read more by clicking on this button. And then it's going to give you all of the source types available for this topic. So featured viewpoint articles. These are viewpoint articles that are being featured, so that might be of interest to you. There are 16. Academic journal articles, 109. Viewpoint articles, there are actually 81. So these are featured, these are all of the viewpoint articles. So again, articles that have some type of opinion attached to them. Primary sources, reference, and if you don't know what reference is, that is encyclopedias and dictionaries. Um, so basically it's usually just straight uh, factual information. Then you have newspapers, magazines, statistics, and then other sources, infographics, images, videos, audio, websites, okay? Now, one thing that's um, different about this database from EBSCO and ProQuest is you can't select multiple at, at once to search together. You have to go to each one individually to search them. So you have to know if you want newspaper or if you want magazines or if you want academic journals and go to that page. So that's one difference between this database and the others. Now when you scroll down here or if you select one of these, it's going to take you to a box with three articles which kind of gives you an overview or an example of this source, this source type. Okay. So these are some examples of academic journals, some examples of viewpoint articles, infographics, etc. Okay. Now I'm going to go into uh, newspapers because I want to show you some specific features um, in the filters for newspapers first. Okay. Okay. So looking at my news results here, you see I have 9,000 news articles. These are sorted by relevance, so relevance to the topic. But you can sort by newest, so most recent, or by document title, so that'll be in alphabetical, or by content level, so the difficulty in the reading level. I'll leave it at relevance. Um, and that's one nice thing about this database is it does tell you the content level or the reading level of each article. So this is a level five. That's the highest or most difficult reading level in this database. Then you'll see here's a level four. That's the next one down. So a level five would be college level. A level four would be like high school level. A level three would be like middle school. And then you have level two and one, which would be like elementary uh, level reading. So that's just a general classification for those reading levels. Another nice thing about this database is that uh, along with the date it was published, it gives you how many words are in this article. Um, so kind of gives you an idea about how long the article is. And then it also tells you here what it is. So this is an article. This is a correction notice because this is a newspaper. You have a lot of different sections in the newspaper that have, um, you know, special purposes. Uh, so this might not serve you or help you with your research. So it's good to know what it is to eliminate it or not use it. You have a brief article. These are all articles, brief articles. So you see 269 words, that's very short. A guest commentary and it goes on and on, okay? Now, uh, you do see the titles of the newspaper articles, but not much about the content. So your filters do help over here on the right-hand side. You can go by public publication date just like you do with EBSCO and ProQuest, and they also have a subject filter, just like in EBSCO and ProQuest. So you can pick a particular subject, and it'll give you how many articles for that subject. Again, you can't select multiple subjects at once like you can in the other databases. You can only select one at a time. Then there is document type. 
So this is very important, especially for newspaper articles, because as I mentioned, you have different sections of the newspaper. So you might not want a letter to the editor or correction notices or interviews or financial reports. You might just want articles. So you would want to select that. Uh, but depending on what your research is about, maybe you do want the financial report or maybe you do want the interview, okay? So that's a really good um, filter that this database provides. Then you have newspaper sections. So remember you have, if, if any of you have ever looked at a print newspaper, they are divided by uh, kind of like topics, but these are the sections of the newspaper. So there's the lifestyle section, the sports section, the arts and entertainment, the news, the business. So if you want to focus on a particular area of the newspaper, you can do that as well. And then you can organize by the reading level. So Lexal measure is the reading level. So you see over here, this level five is 1430. So you'll see here, it's the last one, which is the highest reading level. So you can kind of get an idea of what reading level you want, but you can also do content level, which is these, these right here, these images to kind of help you, which includes the Lexile measure ranges. So you can say, okay, I really only want the academic high school level articles. I don't want these basic, uh, really easy articles, okay? Or maybe you do because you want something that's a little more easy to digest. So that's another really great feature of this database. Another really cool feature of this database is to search within. So I am looking through newspaper articles with the topic of college tuition and student loans, okay? And maybe my subject filter doesn't have the subject that I'm looking for or the keywords that I'm looking for. So with the search within, I can type in a keyword that will hopefully filter down my results and give me something that I'm looking for. So I could type in higher education here and see if that narrows down my results in any way that helps me, gives me um, articles that I'm looking for. So it reduced my results by half roughly to 4,000 and you'll see here the applied filter is in the entire document looking for higher education. And then again, I have to kind of just look at the titles to see if the results are anything that I want or need, okay? Now, um, you can always remove this by just clicking that X and it'll get rid of that filter. Now, when I go into the article, just going to click on the link to open it up. You will get similar tools to what you see in ProQuest and EBSCO. You see the title, the document, the information about the article at the top, and then you'll see the full article. Now these articles are all going to be HTML. They're all going to be embedded in the database. You will not get any PDF options in this database. When I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I will get the, the citation for this article. The default is MLA 9, but you can select APA or Chicago or Harvard, and you can copy paste from here. But um, you also have this really great feature with this database is you can link to your Google Drive and it will save the article to your Google Drive account as a Google Doc and it will include the citation in the Google Doc. You can also just get the citation by itself here by clicking on Google Drive or OneDrive and it'll save it on a Google Doc for you. That's a really cool feature of this database that I really like. With EBSCO and ProQuest, typically they save those articles as PDFs and so you can't work within the document. The other option is to email this article to yourself, which you can email to any email. Um, it will include the full text, so 
it will be in the body of the email. Um, but it will, I don't know, I can't remember if it'll attach the citation to be honest with you. Um, and so you might have to come back to get the citation or email the citation to yourself. Uh, that's typically why I recommend the Google Drive feature if you are a Google Drive user or a OneDrive user because it will save the citation with the article. You can also download the article and of course print it. Those are the kind of major tools that you can use with this database. But there's also up here at the top you have the citation button to pull the citation. Um, this is to send to, so you can send to email or to one of the drives. Download print. Get the link to this article so you can get the link, copy paste, send it to somebody, uh, send it to yourself so you can just click on the link and come back to this page. And then this feature here is another unique feature of this database. This is the highlights and notes. Um, so if I'm reading my article here and I say, oh, this is important for me, after I highlight this pop-up box immediately appears, you can select a color and then here is where you add your note. This is important. And then you wanna make sure you click save. And you can do that however many times you want. Cite this. Need for my support. Okay, or actually let's put uh, supports my thesis. Okay, and then you're gonna see up in the top right corner, it says highlights and notes is now three. So when I click on this, it shows me my highlights and notes, but I can also click on this button here and it will show me my highlights and notes on their own. I can edit my notes um, and they're formatted in MLA. I can choose APA instead. And from here, I can actually um, send it to Google Drive, OneDrive, and save them as their own doc, download it, print it. So I have my highlights and notes on a separate document or page saved, which is really cool, very cool feature of this database. So I'm gonna go back. And that's pretty much it. Oh, the last thing I do wanna show you is the search feature for this database. So let's say you didn't see your topic in that list of browse issues, um, but you still wanna see if this database has anything on your topic. So you can still do a search. So for example, Hot Cheetos. I hope I'm spelling that right. I might be without an H. Yeah, I think I typed it wrong. So. Hot Cheetos. Keep in mind, like I said, whenever you type anything in these databases, spelling does matter. Okay, so I typed it correctly this time. And here I have eight audio results for Hot Cheetos, 34 newspaper results, two magazine results, and that's it, okay? So not a whole lot. Um, which explains why it's not listed as a major topic. Again, this is a hot topic, controversial issue database, so it's going to list issues that are really important right now um, and th that there's a lot of information for out there. So if you don't see your topic listed, don't think that you can't use this database. You can. You can still type in your search, but you just might not get as much as you could from maybe another database, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, and that's pretty much it for opposing viewpoints. So at this point, I've run out of time. I will not be able to cover uh, SIRS issue research or, or films on demand. <clears throat> um, but the little bit that I did give information on these two during my um, first presentation, should be in your activity worksheet filled out. There should be definitely more information about these three databases in your activity worksheet. Don't forget 
that you need to have a completed activity worksheet submitted to me and you need to take this quiz related on this presentation and then also complete your participation survey in order to receive your digital badge for this workshop. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, don't forget you can email me anytime. And I look forward to getting your worksheets and quizzes in order to send you your digital badge. Thanks so much for taking this workshop. Bye.